Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to another Exorcism Team discussion here at the Lighthouse Incorporated Church. So good of you to join us. I'm Adam Betts. I'm Aaron Betts. I am Christopher Gore. And last week, we, we, got, we really teased you guys about this particular demon that can really cause some trouble here. We, we're talking about blockers, blocker spirits, and it's important to understand what this thing is because you do not want to let a demon manipulate your exorcism. So guys, a blocker demon, you're interrogating a spirit, you're casting out a spirit, you're uh, dealing with a soul fragment, dealing with a soul fragment, then all of a sudden something comes up, um, what, what, what's going on? The, the, maybe the person doesn't talk, or maybe, hey, this is working, the person's choking and coughing and, and all this stuff, yep, that, that demon left, that, that huge system, uh, we didn't even need to have it renounce anything, it's just all of a sudden leaving. Blocker spirit. They are. You can be tricked. Yeah. And, and and they are like a demon that's like the other systems and demons are like, all right, here, go. Have it. And that's that right. that thing is pretty much, you know, it, it will get beat up. It will get whatever done to it. But it will manifest, like you're saying, in all kind of different ways. So it's almost like a sacrificial demon for the yeah. point of protecting the group. But yeah. uh, it could manifest in all kind of different ways. Yeah, because yeah, if it stays in there, it can bring... if. If it pushes out the little demon, the little demon can go. If the big demon stays inside, it can come back later and reattach itself because the big demon's still in there. Very good point. It has a, a hold, a stronghold or home. So he's just tooling around. Okay, I'll, I'll hang out till the deliverance team leaves and, oh, they're all clear. I'm back. <laughs> yeah. So we could be chasing the same blocker demon five, six sessions if we're not wise. And this is why it's important to that does happen have discernment but it's also important to realize you know you don't want to spend four or five hours doing a session when you can do it in a half an hour by getting the big root demon out yeah and this is this is one of the things that's a hard concept to get in the beginning because you're excited you know you're seeing some progress you're, you're seeing some some types of fruit and manifestation but you really have to start considering your time you know, because there's going to be a lot of people as you start working exorcism that are going to want your time and you can't spend four and five hours with one person. You got to be able to get to the root quickly and, and get them set free. Also, think about this from a standpoint of the torment that the person's in. So they're hacking, gacking and gagging and all of that. That's that's wear and tear on their system, their physical body. It drains them. It, it takes a lot of a lot of the a lot out of them and it. And, and sometimes it can be a deterrent. Well, I don't want to go through that no more. You know, ain't this, aren't we done? Isn't this over with yet? Mm, right. Right. And it, yeah, cause that's a strategy of the devil. You know, the Bible says, do not grow weary in well-doing. If you do not give up, you will reap the harvest. You will reap that soul. You will reap your freedom. So it wants, like you said, it wants to, to wear the person out, wear the team out. Mm. And, and something that I've been learning, um, you know, and, and gaining discernment and confidence in doing exorcisms like chris was just talking about you know you you want to go after the main ones that have that have a function that need to be named need to be called out and then all the other ones just go out and yep. you may even be picking up you know there's a spirit of slumber or, or agitation or whatever and they're in there that's right but if if the king is you know something you know lethargy or something like that or fatigue or what whatever you know they're the ones that matter the other ones are just working under them. Yep. They have no real role other than, you know, they're doing their thing. They have no stronghold. They have no uh, real authority that need to be cast out from because we're challenging demons with authority. You know, we're using our authority and we're tearing down the authority that the devil brought into this person. He claimed he's using his legal rights, his legal rights, though that's his authority. So it's what spirits have the authority. We're going to take that and everything will just move with it yeah everything else just moves right with it demons love to waste your time they yeah. do they will stall and stall and stall forever absolutely so all right what do you do when you see the blocker be in tune with the holy spirit but pretty you much you have to use your authority and put it back down into torment and refuse to move any further until it until it goes if not you're you're wasting your time you're wasting the person's time and 
you have authority in Christ, you have to use it. And I could talk about the police, but I'm not going to. Um, and I'm saying that from the standpoint, they know when to use authority. They know when to tell people, you know, hey, I'm, I'm dealing with this particular situation. <laughs> you move over there, or I will move you over there. And you have to have that, that attitude when you're dealing with demons. You know, this is your house. This is my area of expertise and my area of responsibility. And I'm here to set this person free. Again, I don't have time to deal with the little incidences that, that go on. I need to get to the root quickly and get it out of there. And think about this from a surgery perspective. You know, sometimes you, you know, you're bleeding or you have a, an explosion and ulcer, in, you know, inside of you. They got to cut to get to the ulcer, but there's all other kinds of things that have happened. But if they don't get to the root cause of what's going on, you can spend time with little blood. Oh, this is leaking here and this is leaking there. And I need to spend time with that. You could bleed out on the table because you're not dealing with the ulcer. Right. Very true. Yeah. That, and that, that's how severe it is. And that's why you said like the devil wants to waste your time and it's important to use your authority. And, you know, give, give yourself grace. You, you don't want to get in competition with Satan or anyone else in the team. You, you, want, to, you want to let the thing kind of, um, you want to let the devil play his hand, so to speak. And what I mean by that is during the session, let's say you're just starting the session. Wait on the Lord. You know, just there, 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 there's no rush. But you want this thing to develop. And like you said, using your authority. If you're not hearing anything, if the thing isn't moving, if nothing's manifested, well, use that authority in Christ and say, whatever demon God has ordained for judgment, we command you to manifest. And, and be prepared to wait. Be prepared for nothing to manifest. If it doesn't manifest, here's, here's a rule of thumb that you need to have. If God doesn't move, I'm not moving. I'm not going to try to make something happen. You know, if the spirit's not manifesting inside of somebody, it's best just to shut the session down and leave. Because if there's no anointing to do anything, nothing's going to get accomplished. You need that anointing in order to be able to set the captive free. And if it's not there, if it's not flowing, nothing will happen other than you getting tired. Right. So what have we learned here, guys? It's important to have discernment and wisdom when you're working with, with demons and even with people. You, you really need to see deep into their heart what's really going on. Sometimes you may want to cast a person out. For you know? real. <laughs> and, I like to do that a lot. Know, <laughs> <laughs> no, but there's, uh, you know, there's, but so when, when someone is, you know, they're wanting to have an exorcism and whatnot, and they're in that chair, but there's something just off. They're not fully believing that, you, that God can do it or whatever. You know, we, we want to, like like Christopher said, we don't want to strive. We want to move on. We're not, we're not going to do this thing without God. But don't let that person stay there in terms of still pray for them. Yeah. Still ask God to soften their heart, yeah. to open their eyes, to give them understanding because they are still a soul. And who knows, a couple months later, they might come back with a, uh, you know, the veil off of their heart, so to speak. And, you know, you know be humble and and sometimes... People need to get in a real spot of need for real to be freed, you know, for real. So maybe they're still holding on to something, some doubt, some, uh, some ungodly thing. And God knows how to get that thing. And he might use your prayer to remove that, whatever blockage that is, because we are dealing with people here. You know, this is all we're dealing with demons, but we're dealing with demons because they're in God's people. I, you know? I turn you over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh. We don't like we don't like saying that, but sometimes it has to happen. The destruction of your flesh, where you get a real desire to change, for the good of their eternal soul. Yep. So God will mess with the temporary flesh to save an eternal soul. Yep. And that that really does need to be our mindset of how we're doing things. It can be so easy to be in the day to day. Well, God's not in the He's in the He's in our day to day. But I'm saying you're only living for the day you're blind to the future. You're, you're, you're blind to the past. You're only living with what's there. We can't, we have to be so focused on God that we see the big picture that he's trying to do. Mm -hmm. 
And that saves us from impatience and it, all kind of things. If not, you're saying you're bigger than God. I, yes. I know what this person needs. I'm able to deliver them apart from God, apart from the Holy Spirit. And you're, you're done from that point there because you're operating in pride. Right. And not humility. And, and the flesh is the one who views in the short term. The spirit is looking forward, looking ahead. Mm -hmm. And p the power, you guys, is in the spirit. In yep. everything we do for God, it's in the spirit, very much including exorcism. Absolutely. And, you know, guys, we talked about soul ties. Well, something for the exorcist to watch is make sure that an ungodly soul tie doesn't form between you and the person you're trying to deliver. Amen. Be because of the compassion. Amen. Because that can easily get distorted. Thank you guys for joining us. Learning about Yay. blocker spirits, legal rights, right of entries, rights to remain. What to do with, with the manifesting systems and ranks and all that stuff. Enjoy your day. Be blessed. Share. Like. Send it to somebody else. And live in your authority in Christ.